Hi, and welcome to DuPont Analysis Part 1. The purpose of this video is to further explain DuPont Analysis and to help you on your written case, which asks you to identify the drivers of return on equity. Um, please bear with me with this video. I'm using all new technology, so it's maybe a little clunky. Why is DuPont analysis important? Well, it helps explain the components of return on equity. It helps pinpoint possible problem areas for management because management can compare the profit margin, total asset turnover, and equity multiplier to help explain return on equity, to see changes, and see what they could improve. As a refresher, Return on equity is equal to return on assets times the equity multiplier. I want to talk a little bit about the equity multiplier. It's a measure of leverage calculated by taking total assets and divided by total equity. If a company is 100% equity financed, they would have an equity multiplier of 1 because total assets would be equal to total stockholders' equity, and there would be no debt. Very conservative. If a company is financed by half equity and half debt, then the equity multiplier would be 2. So you have about 50% of the balance sheet financed by debt, 50% financed by equity. Let's take a look at an example. In the spring of 2010, Apple had a return on equity of 21%. Microsoft had a return on equity of 37%. What is the main cause or driver of the different return on equities for these companies? Okay, your case is going to ask you to identify the main driver of return on equity for the three companies in the case. Here are the components of the return on equity. And I'm going to turn my pen on. Okay. So, return on equity. Let's take a look at that equity multiplier first. Microsoft 2010 had an equity multiplier of 2. So they had about half debt and half equity. Apple had an equity multiplier of about 1.9. Not, not a huge difference there. Now, total asset turnover. Microsoft, 0.8. Apple, 0.7. That is a difference because the asset numbers are big lot of assets, but look at this profit margin. Microsoft 2010, almost 25%. Apple at 16%. So now when we look at return on equity, about 37% for Microsoft, about 21% for Apple in 2010, what is the main driver? I hope you would agree with me and say that the main driver of the return on equity when we compare Apple to Microsoft is Microsoft's profit margin. Now, 2012, look at the return on equities here, both over 40%. Apple's is almost double a lot of change. What happened? Well, equity multiplier of Apple still at 1.9. In fact, I've looked at Apple ratios for a lot of years and Apple tends to always be around that 1.9 or 2 percent. Very well managed to that number. Okay, I'm going to break here with my recording. 